Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week's guitar lesson is a follow-up to one I did a few weeks ago. It was EP303, that was the previous lesson, uh, and it was an unplugged uh, uh, acoustic blues thing, uh, and it was so popular, and I continue to get comments and emails from people saying, hey, make a follow-up to that video, make a part two. And so that's what this video is. It's a response to that. And you can think of this uh, video or this composition two ways. It is a composition that works with the jam track from EP303. So if you want a part two, you got it with this lesson. Or it's also a standalone composition and it works just on its own. It doesn't need anything underneath it to support it. So the last one focused more on lead and this one is more of a rhythmic type uh, it obviously does have some lead stuff, but there's a more of a rhythm base to it. So it's a really cool composition, and we're going to break down note for note, and you'll be able to play it by the end of this. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and download the uh, tablature for this, and get the, you can also get the jam track from EP303, which was last or two weeks ago. But anyway, you can get the tablature for this one and the part two video by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP305. Alright, so by the end of this lesson, you're going to have this awesome blues composition that you can play by yourself. It works on an acoustic or electric guitar, so think of that as the carrot that's out there dangling in front of you. That's your goal. Now, uh, now some people complain when I like to take these little side streets as we go through lesson material, and I call them takeaways, uh, but they're little extra pieces that I like to weave into the lesson material, and this one is just full of it. There's so many ideas. So for those of you that are looking to really enhance your blues playing, this is an awesome lesson because I'm going to give you lots of extra things. Think of, think of them as little mini lessons within this lesson. Now I'm just mentioning that up front because I know some people complain. They say, hey dude, you ramble too much. Just stick to the original goal. You know, we don't want to hear any of the, any of the fluff. But if that's your mindset, you got to kind of open your mind to this because uh, a lot of this stuff will really help you if that's your goal is to try and become a better player and get some other ideas. Uh, kind of keep that in mind that that stuff's coming. Uh, and, and it's very intentional. I include that stuff on purpose. It's not uh, accidental. So uh, let me just mention this guitar because I know I'm going to have some questions about it. This is a fairly new one for me. I've had it for a few months. First time on video. Uh, but this is a uh, mahogany uh, Martin 017, 1947. And you can see that this thing has been loved on. I mean, it is all scratched up and just sort of, uh, it's not been taken the best of care of, but it just gives it character, I think. And man, this, this thing sounds, oh, it sounds so good. I, you can't pick it up really here. I've just got one mic sitting off camera here. Um, but it plays good and it sounds good and I can't stop playing this thing. I'm just, I've fallen in love with this guitar. I did when I picked it up at the store. I, I saw it sitting there and I saw the scratches. And by the way, that's a, a telltale sign usually. If you see a guitar that's kind of beat up, that means somebody's been loving on that guitar and there's a reason for that. It must, must be a good player. So this thing was just like, I had to have it. And there was actually somebody else that was looking at it that was interested and we were kind of both like... You know, but anyway, that's what it is. It's a 017 1947 uh, Martin. Um, okay, let's talk about the song. So the song is played in the key of E, 12 bar blues, and this, by the way, is a follow up to EP 303. At least it started as a follow up, and it still is. But you can play this along with the jam track from 303. That was the uh, Clapton acoustic thing that I did a few weeks ago. Uh, and I wanted to create a part two to that. So think of this as a part two to that lesson. Last, the, the last one was more of a lead lesson. This one has got some lead stuff, but I think of this as more of a rhythm. It's got more of the, the drive-in rhythm stuff. So between the two, you've got a real wide spectrum of kind of classic blues. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this song is 12-bar blues in the key V. It starts with a classic blues intro turnaround that goes... Right? So you've heard that before, that's something similar. Here's how we play it. Middle finger comes up to the 4th fret 3rd string, and I like to slide into that note. I think it sounds a little better to do that. Then index fingers on the 3rd fret 2nd string, and then the open 1 string. So it's 3, 2, 1. And when I pick that, it's pit down, down, up. The up is on the 1 string. Now we're going to walk that down 1, and then we're going to walk it down 1 more. So it goes like this. Easy to play with the left hand, just walking it right down. And then watch this. 
So all I'm doing here is I'm playing the open third string with a hammer onto the first fret, middle finger goes down on the second fret fourth string. And just think of that as two notes out of your E chord. We just walk down to the E. And then there's the the uh, the five chord, which is your B7 chord. Now walked up to that on the fifth string. So that's the open fifth, first fret, and then the second fret on the fifth string. Now play that with your middle finger, that fifth uh, second fret, fifth string, so that the other fingers can fall into place and play the B7 chord. And I'm using my pinky, so there's your B7 chord, I've got my pinky in that chord as well. I include that, that's the second fret, first string. And that's the intro to this. Now one little sidebar is uh, you can uh, do some other variations if you like that. Um, you can include your ring finger on the fourth fret first string, and then you can take it off, and then you can put it back. So you have this kind of, it's more of a Robert Johnson. That kind of thing. So there's all kinds of variations you can do. You can also go backwards. You can play. So, you know, kind of mess around with that. All right, so after that, then I go right into it and I play. That's how I started it. Now I got this from Tony Joe White. Rest in peace, Tony. Uh, but this is something that's in like Poke Salad Annie, a lot of his stuff. He's just a phenomenal guitar player. Um, but um, it starts, uh, let me show you how to play it and then I'll show you how to connect it to something you know so it'll make sense. Uh, but I've got my ring finger on the fifth fret, fourth string. My index finger is on the third fret, uh, third string. And I slide that up uh, one fret. And actually, you could play the second string and the first string as well if you wanted to include those, because those would be in the E chord. But all I'm thinking about when I'm coming up to this is I'm actually thinking about the E chord like this. So we, I went through the cage system in a lesson. It's EP273 if you want a, a, a background on that. But this is another voicing for an E chord. And so if you took your middle finger out and you just looked at these two notes out of that chord, that's what I was walking up to. You can always slide up to a chord. So remember that, if you're playing a blues, this is a ryth little rhythm lesson here. Look at this, this is an E9, you can slide into it. You can go into your four chord. You can slide into all of them, but you start a half step down and slide into it. So that's kind of what's happening here. Okay, uh, so after I slid into this, then I came down, as this is ringing out, I hit the open sixth string because that starts the shuffle part. And that allows me to take my hand off while that's ringing out, take my hand off and come down here and uh, push down on the second fret, fifth string so that I can play that. And then what all I'm doing then for the rest of the shuffle, and this will be true over the uh, one chord and the four chord, uh, is to play this. Now I use my pinky for that, but I'm coming down on the 4th fret 5th string and I'm just going back and forth. I'm keeping that 2nd fret 5th string down the whole time. And that's the sound, so we have... So just practice that. Just What you want is consistency. You want uh, something where if you were tapping your foot, you don't even need a metronome. You could just tap your foot. But you want it to keep going. You don't want there to be a break as you get from here to here. So once you can get that, and slow down the tempo by the way. There's no tempo for this. It's whatever you make it. This sounds really good played very, very slowly. It's just as good as it does slow as it does fast. So, uh, so you can adjust it uh, to, to your need. And then to go to the four chord, which happens right there, I did the same kind of thing. I just slid into the A chord. That's that sliding into the chord thing I was mentioning. So all I'm doing, if uh, I'm picturing your, think your A bar chord, and I'm just playing strings two and three, but I just need those two. I don't need to make the full chord. 
uh, or the full bar. So I'm just going to take that down uh, a half step so that I can slide into it. So I'm starting with my middle finger on the third fret, uh, or sorry, fifth fret, third string. My my index finger is on the fourth fret, second string. We're going to play those two notes, and then when I slide up to this, and then while this is ringing out. I can hit the open fifth string and do, start that same shuffle just like we did over the the one chord. So it's like this. By the way, these are all downstrokes uh, with the right hand. Everything's a downstroke so far in this beginning part. All right, so let's back up to the very beginning and play up to that point. So we have. I go into so this is sliding into really it's like we're going back to the one chord and I'm thinking of an E7 chord or an E7 chord like this better example and I'm just playing strings two and three so I'm sliding into that now once I come into that I could go back into the shuffle but I just, it sounded too, a little bit too monotonous. I want to give, wanted to give you a different idea. And I think you're going to really like this one. So once we come to this. I play this kind of a, it's more like a piano type rhythm. So what I ended up playing was a slide. So I'm starting here with my middle finger on the uh, third fret, third string index finger is on the second fret second string and I'm sliding it up one and then I'm gonna come down and hit the sixth string twice and then there's an A chord so just strings two three and four on the second fret and then the sixth string again and now we're playing the E chord but I'm hammering on with my index finger to that first fret third string so we have to the A chord again. So I hit the 6th string and then the A chord again. So you can see we're going back and forth between chord and bass note. Chord and bass note. So it goes like this. Okay, now why I say that that's important, it doesn't it may, may not sound like much, but I've used this thing for all it's worth in all my years of playing rhythm guitar. So if we were to do that in a different key, like in the key of G, for example, you'd play something like... You can see how it's all the same thing that we just played here. Now I'm not playing the, remember when we did this, I was hitting the open E string. Now that's not going to work. So I'm just playing the, the root note in this case, which would be a G note. Coming back to that. Now I can do that in any key. And so if you're ever in a blues and you're hanging out on a chord for an extended period of time, this is a great technique and it works fast, slow. There it is in A. Um, so anyway, think of that as uh, uh, another little lesson there. You can start to explore that. So. And then after that, I went. To get us to the four chord. And that's a, a classic blues move. I don't know who to attribute that to. I mean, obviously, it's been done by a lot of people. I was trying to think where I remember it, and I, I can't. But uh, what I'm doing there is I'm going back to that. Think of that E7 chord shape, uh, where we've got our index finger on the third fret, uh, second string, ring, middle finger on the fourth fret, third string, and I'm doing a series of triplets, downstrokes with the right hand, triplet, triplet, one, two, three, one, two, three. And every time I do it, I'm sliding into it. Now I just bump the, the D string there, try not to do that, just try and focus on strings two and three. So it's triplet, triplet. And then we're just going to keep walking it up to the A chord. And that should be a takeaway uh, by itself because if you think about what's happening here, you're starting with the one chord, which is like an E7 chord. Think of it that way. And then you're walking up to the four chord using that same shape. And then if you walk up two more frets, you've just walked to the five chord. So now you've got your five chord your uh, four chord and then back to your one chord even though it's a seven 
Um, that's what's happening there. Okay, so. Now when I slide this in, I'm not gonna pick that last note. I'm gonna slide it up to this position. And as soon as I slide in, at the same time, I hit the fifth string. So. So just practice that. And then that allows me, while that note is ringing out, that fifth string to take my hand off and come back down to the shuffle. Now after that, I play this and I use this a lot when I'm playing in A because it's so easy to do and it works really well as a rhythm. So what I'm doing to play that, uh, that little variation, is I've got a, a bar here on the fifth fret, barring the first four strings. Think of your root fret on your fifth fret if you're playing your A major bar chord. So, uh, and I'm gonna play strings five, which is the open fifth string, at four and three. And then I'm gonna, gonna hammer on with my middle finger to the sixth fret third string. And then I'm gonna come up here and play the seventh fret, uh, do a bar there on the seventh fret, strings four and three, and then back to that hammer on. Now that should be a, a huge takeaway for those of you doing a blues shuffle in the key of A because man, does that give you a nice variation. So if you were playing a song in the key of A, It doesn't matter the tempo, the feel, it doesn't have to be a shuffle. You can always work that in. And uh, I always find myself going to that. It's one of the nice things about playing blues songs with open bass strings. That's why we have so many blues songs in the key of E or A, because we can do things like that. If you're trying to do that with a, in the key of B or G, it's not as easy. All right, so let's back up and we'll take it from... Go back to the shuffle after we play that. Come back to the A shuffle, and then I went. We get us back to the one chord. That's just the A chord, the open six string, and then that hammer on again to, that we play with the E chord. And then the E shuffle. And then to give another variation. do that in. And this is another example of sliding into a chord, as I mentioned at the beginning. We're just sliding up to the E7 chord. There's a little triad that's played here uh, on the first three strings, and you can just picture your D7 chord shape. That's all it is. We just slide it up. You slide that one up two frets so that your index finger is in the third fret second string. And that's the shape, and we're just going to slide into it. See how it works with that uh, blues shuffle. Okay, for backing it up from here. Now we go to the five chord. So I was thinking of the B chord shape, and you'll know that uh, from the caged lesson that you can play the chord like this, or you can play it like this. You're just changing out the bass note, but that bar stays the same. So what I wanted to do is play out of this shape because you have some extra things that you can do. So this is another little takeaway for those of you that might not know about this, but if you're playing out of that, and that's the A chord shape out of Cage, but if you're playing on this side of it, you can play some kind of bluesy licks while holding the bar down. I guess that's the point. So to get to that, I walked up, I thought of this as like a bass part, uh, what, what a bass player might do. So I'm, I'm on the fourth fret, fifth string, walking up fourth, fifth, sixth, all on the fifth string, and then walked it up like that. So I kept the bar there on the fourth fret, the first four strings, and played strings four and three, and then did my, my hammer on, uh, or not my hammer on, sorry, but my ring finger to the sixth fret fourth string, took that off, and then I came up to the seventh fret on the fourth string. 
So we have... And then for the V chord, or the A chord, I came down here and played basically the same thing. That part's the same, but then I went... There was a little uh, slide with my ring finger, so I reached up here, kept that bar there, or kept my finger on the 2nd fret 4th string, but I reached up with my ring finger to the 5th fret 4th string, and did a slide down to the 4th fret, and then the 2nd fret, and then I came down and played the 4th fret 5th string, and then back to the 2nd fret on the 4th string. So we have... And then I hit that open 6th string, that E string. So let's take it from... Uh, We'll take it from back here. Back to the one chord. Here it goes. And then what's after that? walk down. Now this time it was a little different. It's basically the same principle, but I'm starting with my uh, ring finger and my middle finger both in the same fret. So they're both in the fourth fret. So it's strings three and one. And I'm hybrid picking that. So that means I'm picking on the third string with my pick and then I'm using my ring finger to pluck the first string. And you just walk it down. Same shape. Back to the uh, hammer on uh, open third string to the first fret and then your your turnaround chord or your five chord which is that B7 chord and then that's going to end this first part then we go into the second half which has a whole new set of licks and, th and ideas uh, but uh, I thought that was a good sort of stopping place for this video it otherwise becomes too much let me back up then and I'm going to go through all of this material one more time so you have one more version of this. I'll play through it slowly. And then I'll see you in part two. And make sure to check out Premium Membership if you haven't done so. It's a great deal and you get uh, tablature and all the materials you need for these lessons each week. And also, if you haven't liked me on, uh, or haven't subscribed to me rather, on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and hit the alert bell and you'll get a little notification every time I put up a new lesson. All right, so here we go from the beginning. Mm -hmm.